Hey, it's me and create this book too. Today I'm doing another couple pages in my create this book too. I've been doing create this book or create this book too on my channel for the past, what, five years or so. You guys love this series and you request it all the time. So I just wanna say thank you for being patient with me as you wait for me to get around to doing it again. In reality, I have already completed the pages for this episode. Um. I know things that are going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't want to give too much away, but I do want to say that I'm sorry. I hope that you still like the series after you see what I do today. Let's get started. Hey, so the book. Let's find our first page for today. Aha, this one. Apparently I've already started this page at some point because it's already been double layered. Hmm, have no memory of that. The directions say create a comparison. Use colors you love on this page, use colors you dislike on this page. <coughs> I think I just sneezed as my transition. So I'm sketching out an upside down mushroom. No, this is a human being. A people. People. Mm. And then another on this page. Can't you tell? Yeah, this is gonna take a while to refine these sketches, so let me spare you. I'm drawing two contrasting people to illustrate my concept. Is it the same girl? It could be. This is her when life is great, and this is her when she's feeling a bit emo. And now on to the color. I'm getting out my colored pencils. <laughs> And I'm gonna pick out some colors I like. Red, orange, yellow, orange, yellow, pink, light pink, green, blue, purple, dark green, dark blue, and dark purple. These are my choices for colors I love. Isn't that every color? Yes, yes it is. So I'm gonna color a big, bright, rainbowy setting. Let's play a fun game called Count How Many Times I Can Break My Lead. One, two, three, four. Okay, this isn't fun anymore. I used to think it was a myth that if you drop your pencil, the lead breaks more often. So, you know, I haven't been particularly careful with my pencils over the years. Let this be a lesson to you all. So in the past, I've had some struggles with drawing faces. There was my squishy people experience, my terrible self-portrait from last week. Some people have told me, you know, you're not good at drawing people. Just give up. But no, have I drawn some bad people in the past? Yes, but that's not because I'm just unnaturally bad at drawing people, it's just because because I haven't spent the time practicing. I avoid it, which is not a good way to improve. I do want to get better at drawing people, so instead of avoiding it, I'm going to face my fears. So I'm drawing this lady or girl. Don't ask her age, that's rude. She's dressed very young, but uh, I don't know, maybe she's a full grown woman with two kids and a law degree, I don't know. Ugh. Five. You may notice that I decided not to do any outlining. Instead, I'm just going right over the sketch with my colored pencils. Most of the time, the colored pencil is dark enough to cover up any of the sketch lines. So what exactly is happening here? Well, basically, it's a girl sitting in a pile of rainbow goo. And then there's just like, you know, dripping rainbow all around her. Is it paint? Is it slime? It's not clear. I just happen to like color in liquid form. So that's... Weird. I'm just going through and darkening all the colors and starting to refine this a little bit more. I used to say that my number one favorite color was green, but I think actually it might be blue or pink. Nope, I don't know. Because I love them all. Adding in more shadows and details. This is the hand cramp stage where blisters are born. All right, so this is looking okay. The drips are really cool and she's not terrible. Yeah, I like it. So time for the highlights. I think I should have gotten the finer point Posca pens because these are some thick fat highlights. It's real glossy up in here. But that's fine. Not fine enough. <laughs> So there's the happy, smiley, rainbow girl woman. But what about this one? I'm gonna pick out the colors that I'm not as fond of. That didn't take too long. Notice the difference. And I'm just gonna use those to color her in. Basically, they're just a handful of like really muted colors. There's really no color that I can say I just don't like because any color can be beautiful if it's used beautifully. Aww. But I do gravitate toward brighter colors in general. I'm shading the hands and face the best I can. We're practicing here, remember? Oh, 
almost forgot to leave enough space for the forehead. I do that sometimes. Or I forget to leave enough space for the chin, or the eyes are crooked, or the nose is too short. I also have a tendency to make fish lips. Sometimes the whole face just looks like a fish. She kind of has it. So I've got some issues, okay? That's what we're trying to work through. The majority of this page is actually just going to be painted black because black is actually technically not a color. So when somebody says that their favorite color is black, they just said nothing. If you want to be really annoying, you can point that out. It's the absence of color is what it is. It's complete darkness where no color can exist. What the heck is she talking about? So I kept the kind of drippy theme going on, but instead of it being like a happy, rainbowy, fun drippiness, it's the darkness taking over. Oh my gosh, help us, save us. That's the idea behind it, totally deep and conceptual, right? Okay, and this is the final page. You know, I definitely do see some issues here and there with it, but I'm actually really happy with it. I like it. I'm satisfied. Not for long. So now I'm gonna go on a hunt for another page that I can put a person on. This one. It says, create a shock. Do something unexpected by decorating this page in an uncharacteristic way. So this seemed like just the perfect page because I typically don't draw people, although some of that shock has worn away since that's kind of all I've done this episode. I also wanted to try drawing a face closer up than what I did before. So I am trying to draw a shocked face with oversized eyes. I still wanted it to be kind of cartoony and like a stylized look. So I didn't use a reference. That was a mistake. Why would you not use a reference for a human face when you're not good at drawing the human face? Stupid. I got cocky. I don't know. Now I feel like drawing a human face isn't shocking enough. So to bump up the shock factor, I decided to give her bright red eyes to be like creepy and scary. I don't usually do creepy. Well, not intentionally. Wait, I kind of just did though. Whatever. It's shocking. Aren't you shocked? And to go a step further, I added some bloody, gory, missing flesh on her face. That's definitely not something that I ever do. Pretty opposite of my typical style. I know a lot of people do love the gore art and zombie flesh and all that. Not me. I'm not a big fan of it. Just not my thing. But for this page, I'm going to give it a try. I spent so long on this page. I toiled. I really wanted this to look good. I usually love my colored pencils, but we were not getting along. The shading, it ended up looking like I'm trying to do realism and just failing. I wish that I could say that I wasn't trying, but no, this is me trying. Oh boy. I feel really bad for this girl. I mean, not only does she have chunks missing from her face, but her face. It's just bad. In fact, the chunks missing is probably the best thing that's ever happened to her because they distract from her actual face and her hair. First of all, it took so long and my hand was just on fire. Fire, fire. But the worst part is after all the time and effort, it ends up looking not even good. Ugh. Also, her hair is supposed to be covering up like part of her face, but it kind of just looks like her face is deformed. Ironically, the only part I did really like was the bloody area. <laughs> I think the biggest shock of this page is how bad the art is. So I still followed the prompt indirectly. I know that it bothers some of you how hard I am on myself and my art, but like, let's be real. This just isn't that great of art. So if my art's a little whack, then I'm just gonna say it. And if I don't have fun making the art, then at least I have fun making fun of my art. <laughs> I don't feel the need to take myself super seriously. I was actually gonna stop after this because honestly, I was so tired. Making bad art is exhausting. But a couple days later, I decided, you know what? No, we have to push on. I got a new wave of energy. So I found this page, create a list of favorites. Choose any character category and make a list of all your favorites. And I'm gonna choose my favorite flavors. So, <clears throat> pay no attention to this sketch of a fish. I was gonna use cupcakes and theme them with each flavor that I wanted to show, but, oh boy, she's trying people again. I quickly sketched out a couple designs for people to represent the different flavors instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and transfer this idea into the book and sketching it out in more detail this time. I ended up killing off the girl on top. She was just kind of floating there awkwardly and I, I wasn't a fan. She was gonna be cookies and cream, so it's kind of a shame. Rest in peace. Hi, I wanna show you something really special. Oh, they're so cute. 
These are crochet animals made by my mom. You may know that my mom likes to crochet animals. I've shown you her creations on multiple occasions, but these are her newest creation. It's Pickle the Dinosaur and boom, Pink Pickle. Pickled pink. <laughs> It's such a cute idea. So yes, my mom meticulously made each and every one of these by hand. They took like 30 hours each and they're all special and unique and have their own little personalities. Hi! She is listing these on her eBay store, which I will link in the description. This is all that are in existence currently, so the auction will only last a few days. Whoever snags one of these is very lucky. Each of them come with the adoption certificate, but these are hand numbered and hand signed by me. Yeah. I am just very happy to be promoting these for my mom. Let's get back to create this book. After some time, I finally got my sketch together, and this time I am gonna outline. It was time to replace this micron, so I did. Fascinating. Also this time, I am gonna try to keep the designs a little bit more simple and actually make it like true to a cartoony kind of vibe. And the outlines are done. This first girl represents the flavor cotton candy, which yes, it is one of my favorite flavors. And I have to say, I actually love the design for this girl. Her hair is like the cotton candy, and then she's wearing like a little cone as a hat. I chose of my favorite flavors, the ones that have the most visual appeal. My actual favorite flavor is probably chocolate, but I wanted to do more colorful flavors that made from like more interesting designs. I don't know why that matters, but I said it. Okay, why does she look so weird? Oh no. What did I do this time? Oh, I forgot her eyebrows. <laughs> okay. Moving on to the next girl. This one is themed strawberry. She's got some bright red and pink hair and her face and hair kind of create the shape of a strawberry. And I gave her some bright green eyes to represent the leaves and little freckles to represent the seeds. Oh, she really reminds me of one of my very old drawings. I made this strawberry themed girl called a uh, straw Becky. This is her, it's the same girl. She just changed her hair color and became slightly less awkward. <laughs> Okay, moving on to what? Rainbow again? Yes! Before you say, Rainbow isn't a flavor, go talk to the Skittles marketing team. Try telling them that. I know Rainbow isn't really a flavor per se, but something that looks rainbow automatically tastes better. Like this cake I made. Was it an outstanding flavor? No, but since it was rainbow, it tastes pretty good. Next question is, what is up with her hair? So her hair is in two mini buns with scrunchies around them. I wanted them to represent the clouds at the bottom of the rainbow. I went a little too heavy with the shading, so it looks a little gray. They're storm clouds. Either way, I think it's pretty interesting looking. I'm actually a fan. Her and the Cotton Candy Girl are probably my two favorites on this page. But we still have S'more Girl to finish. She's special too. So I had a lot of fun with this page, thankfully. After doing the last page, I was a little worried, but I think that this is more my style and more kind of my vibe. Designing people to represent different flavors. It was just really fun for me. Oh, wow, that's nice. Thank you. Here's the final page. I'm really glad that we can end the video on a better note. I spent this whole video working on drawing people. Oh, I just realized I only drew females. Well, one step at a time. I still have a long way to go, obviously, but hopefully I'm learning little by little. Last thing I wanna share is these photos of Create This Book pages, and these are actually from an Instagram Instagram account that I follow. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.